up to $800,000 gone. An aid on your side investigation uncovered that Hark, a longtime champion for the support and treatment of the developmentally disabled, took that money from its clients without their knowledge or permission. The state attorney general investigated and closed the case. But now senior investigative reporter Steve Andrews says others want a more thorough investigation. Bill Shambliss was one of about 50 clients at the Hillsborough Association of Retarded Citizens, or HARC, whose money was taken from a trust fund set up for their care. That money, mostly from Social Security, was put aside for things like dental treatments, trips to the movies, an occasional meal at a restaurant. Bill's brother-in-law is HARC Foundation Chair Steve Brannick. It was done without their permission and knowledge, including without our knowledge uh, for our brother-in-law, Bill. So to our mind on the board, that makes it wrong. So wrong, Florida's Attorney General launched an investigation in 2011. Hark's board discovered that CEO Richard Lilliston allowed the agency to take up to $800,000 from the client's trust fund. Money belonging to Bill and other clients plugged holes in Hark's budget. Instead of paying for a meal at McDonald's, it helped pay for things like salaries and perks for Lilliston and CFO Frank Panulo. Perks that included what Brannick says was an unauthorized $1,800 a month car allowance for each and cell phones for Lilliston's family. Hart terminated both Panulo and Lilliston. They didn't care about clients. Months later, at a July 2012 meeting, Hark board members feeling the pressure of the AG investigation and imminent financial collapse lashed out at Lilliston and Panulo. They sat there and asked for some the bonuses, and we didn't give them what they asked for. They, yeah, they, they took it in. They took it in the car allowance. You know, anyway. Jerking us around and uh, putting everybody, giving everybody cell phones and... What's even more outrageous, this all happened right under the nose of Hark's board of directors. Panulo initially told us he didn't remember how the client's money was used. Do you know if it was spent on operations? Uh, it was probably borrowed for operations. It should show in the foundation books. Okay. Do you know if anybody gave permission to move the money out of that client's account into uh, Hark's for operations? CEO had to it. CEO Williston, a media darling while at Hark, he enticed local TV personalities, including several from News Channel 8, to participate in charity fashion shows, bowling events, and golf tournaments to raise money for Hark. I want to thank all of our supporters again. Never shy about discussing the agency on camera back then, Williston refuses comment now. He wouldn't come to his door to answer questions about why he used clients' money without their permission. But as we left, he peeked out from behind a tree. It's actually taking money from the very people that we advocate for. Deborah Linton is the executive director of the Ark of Florida, a statewide organization whose mission is to improve the quality of life for people like Bill. I've never seen an organization overall take this amount of resident funds and use it for themselves. It's, it's pretty shocking, and we were very disturbed by it. The attorney general found no criminal wrongdoing. It closed the case and referred it to the Department of Financial Services. When asked, the AG's office said the wording of the trust allowed Hart to spend the client's money. I don't see that that's allowed at all, and I would, uh, I would sure hope that the attorney general would take a second look at this. Elder law attorney Charlie Robinson reviewed the trust for eight on your side. He says the wording is clear. The trust was set up for clients' supplemental needs and care. What Hark Management did was wrong. I think there are huge legal questions that, that are raised that, uh, that law enforcement, whether it's the attorney general or, or uh, somebody, should really take a much closer look at. As for clients like Bill who lost their money, they won't be getting it back anytime soon. In Tampa, Steve Andrews, News Channel 8. Deborah Linton says if Hark is allowed to get away with taking clients' money, it sets a dangerous precedent statewide. The Attorney General's office says it is confident in the way it's handled the Hark investigation and its referral to the Department of Financial Services. What happened to their money and what is law enforcement doing about it? Two questions raised by an eight on your side investigation into missing money at the Hillsborough Association for Retarded Citizens, or HARC as it's better known. Tonight, senior investigative reporter Steve Andrews has confirmed Florida's Attorney General, as well as other agencies, are investigating the 60-year-old agency known nationally for its care and treatment of developmentally disabled people. 
The attorney general last year closed its investigation into Medicare fraud issues, but tonight Steve tells us there are a lot of other questions that need answers. Vicki Caldwell is a 44-year-old woman with the mental capacity of an 18-month-old. Her mother, Carolyn, placed Vicki with the Hillsborough Association for Retarded Citizens, or HARC, more than 20 years ago. She's lived in a HARC Riverview group home since. Our investigation has discovered HARC took most of the $49,000 Vicki was supposed to have in a special trust and used it to help fund its daily operations. We were never told that they were going to use money from the trust fund to keep the, the, the doors open. Well, that's what Hart did. Among the expenses Vicky's money helped pay for, an $1,800 a month car allowance for former CEO Richard Lilliston and another one for former CFO Frank Panulo. That's what I was worried about. Carolyn Caldwell saw our prior reports on Hart, which reveal mismanagement and possible criminal activity. She had no idea Vicky accumulated that amount of money or that Hark went through it. But I was never given information as to how much was in her account. And I think they should have to account for every penny that's missing. Vicki, along with other group home residents, receives Medicaid benefits. Since Medicaid recipients can't have more than $2,000 in assets, the government allows agencies like Hark to set up trusts in which clients can bank money for treatments and therapies that Medicaid will not cover. Our investigation found while the agency did indeed establish a trust, that's not where it put the client's money. Instead, the benefits of more than 40 clients, including Vicky's, were deposited into a money market account in SunTrust Bank, where it became a giant hark slush fund. Trust attorney Charlie Robinson. So there's a proper way uh, to handle a pool trust. This, this just doesn't appear to me that uh, there was anything proper about it. The contracts Hark had clients signed to join the trust, called joinder agreements, were hardly proper either. Carolyn Caldwell doesn't remember signing such an agreement. Maybe Vicky did. Vicky's not capable. She has an 18-month mentality, and uh, so she wouldn't be capable of signing anything or agreeing to anything. Didn't seem to matter to Hark who signed what. According to an attorney general's investigation of the trust and Hark, a former employee found clients who were not mentally competent signed these agreements without a guardian present basically handing the money to Hark. This one signed by a developmentally disabled client named Robert Franklin in 2007. Not only was this document signed by former CEO Lilliston and notarized by former CFO Panulo in 2007, another significant problem, the employees who signed as witnesses in 2007 didn't start working for Hark until 2009. That sure smells. It sure looks bogus to me. It all smelled bogus to Hark's board of directors, too. The board fired Lilliston when it learned of his lavish car allowance and that Hark had cleaned out clients' accounts. Recordings of summer 2012 board meetings reveal Hark teetered on financial collapse. The board decided it would pay only essential bills to keep the lights on. But it had something else on its mind. to know if Hark had the money to pay for an insurance policy to protect it, the board, from lawsuits filed by angry family members. Carolyn Caldwell says she'd consider participating in a class action lawsuit against Hark's board because, among other things, she claims with the money gone, Vicki cannot afford to go to a dentist to have a front tooth that was knocked out replaced. I think she deserves the money back and it deserves to be used for what it's supposed to be allocated for. The speech therapy, the physical therapy, dental, whatever the needs are that there's not enough funds through Medicaid to pay for. All of those clients deserve their money back. According to Hark's attorney, about 700000 is gone, spent without the knowledge or permission of clients or family members. And that's just a part of it. Florida's Department of Financial Services is investigating Hark, billing the state for services it did not provide. Now, Attorney General Pam Bondi told me on Monday multiple units within her office are actively investigating this matter along with other agencies. But so far, no one has been held accountable.
So, Hark is gone. Yep. The CEO, the CFO, gone. The money is gone. Yep. What is the chance of recovering any of this? That is why the board is so interested in whether or not its insurance policy is paid up, Gail, because it appears the only hope that clients have might be filing a civil action against Hark and the board that puts insurance money into play. You know, Gail, when I talked to Carolyn Caldwell, she asked about physical and speech therapy for Vicki, and she was told, there just wasn't any money for those services. But there was plenty of money for some pretty cushy car allowances. Makes you mad, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. Our aid on your side investigation was the first to tell you about the Hillsborough Association for Retarded Citizens claiming it provided services to people who were already dead. Money taken from people who need specialized care the most. Tonight we can tell you the state now has some of that money back. Senior investigative reporter Steve Andrews broke the story about Hark's brazen billings in January. He joins us tonight with this newest development, Steve. It's a big one, Gail. Late today, Florida's chief financial officer announced that $310,000 of money Hark misused was returned to the state. CFO Jeff Atwater told me this was not a mistake or misjudgment on Hark's part. In fact, he called it a repeated effort by Hark management to misrepresent and overbill the state. It was uh, fraud from top to bottom. Florida's chief financial officer says former administrators at Hark fraudulently billed the state for hundreds of thousands of dollars in the HomeLink program. In HomeLink, Hark clients provide services like yard work or house cleaning to homebound seniors. In January, an eight on your side investigation revealed that Hark was collapsing financially. We also disclosed Hark's attorney, Cynthia Mykos, informed board members last summer of the state's investigation into claims that Hark billed Florida's Agency for Persons with Disabilities for providing services to people who were already dead or didn't even exist. We build services on Park Foundation Chair Stephen Brannick. Um, that's a shocking allegation. Um, and uh, and if, if that happened and it happened improperly, we would be just as angry about it as the, as the state. The state says it happened. Atwater called the billings intentional, fraud, despicable. I think this is off the scale, and uh, I hope it sends a message to anyone else in the state of Florida that if you engage in such behavior, that will take the fine dollars of your neighbors and steal them, frankly, from getting to the place where the most vulnerable could use it. Uh, we're going to find you, and we're going to hold you accountable, and you'll pay a price. In 2011, a former Hark employee claimed former CFO Frank Panulo pressured her to create false documents for the HomeLink program using names from Meals on Wheels. What do you know about uh, billing for dead people in the HomeLink program? Nothing. Did you sign those invoices? Uh, yes. You, you got to understand, yeah. um, I was not involved at all in the programmatic part of that program. Panulo was fired by former CEO Richard Lilliston. When the board discovered in 2011 that Lilliston and Panulo collected unauthorized $1,800 a month car allowances, it fired Lilliston. Lilliston has refused to comment on anything related to Hark. Atwater uh, has plenty to say. Offered. They were pulling money down from the state that could have gone to others in need, uh, and it was a it was not an accident. Uh, this was this was uh, intentional. They had all the documentation. They knew what they were doing. They thought they'd get away with it. Now, for taking money from the most vulnerable in our society, Atwater says on the despicable scale of one to ten, this is a 100. Last summer, the Department of Financial Services was looking at hitting Hark with $2 million in fines, penalties, and restitution. The 300 grand wraps up the civil side of this case. Well, Steve, you've been telling us for a long time that Hark had no money, yeah. so I guess my first question is, where is the settlement money coming from, and will there be any criminal charges? Well, as far as the, the money, the state sat down with the company that was insuring Hark's board of directors and officers and pounded out a settlement with them. Now, CFO Atwater wouldn't comment on on a possible criminal investigation, but he did use the words fraud, intentional, and steal. My sources tell me another shoe should be dropping on Hark very soon. Those are big words. All right. Thank you, Steve. Robert Franklin signed a contract entrusting thousands of his dollars to the Hillsborough Association for Retarded Citizens, or Hark. For decades, Hark cared for developmentally disabled people in the Bay Area. So why is Robert's family now so furious? Are there problems? Senior investigative reporter Steve Andrews tells us, you bet there are.
Ralph Franklin buried his younger brother Robert in 2011. Everybody that knew him loved him. Robert, an individual with Down syndrome, died at 46. He always had a smile on his face. Um, you know, uh, him and I were always roughhousing and tussling together. You know, trying to take his plate from him and, and those kind of things that brothers do. Robert lived in group homes at the Hillsborough Association for Retarded Citizens, or HARC. The caregivers at the group homes that he was in were absolutely phenomenal. They took great care of him. Ralph says his parents were very involved with Robert's care. At one time, they both served as HARC board members. Now, his family feels betrayed. I find it absolutely deplorable. Ralph was disappointed by an April 8 on your side report that profiled Vicki Caldwell and how Hark spent her money. Money set aside for her care and needs and supposedly placed in a trust. He was floored to discover from that same story that his brother signed a contract placing his Social Security benefits into that same so-called trust. They knew that he didn't have the, the, the mental capability to enter into this kind of legal agreement. Ralph and his parents were Robert's legal guardians. We had no knowledge that this agreement existed. Robert couldn't read. There's absolutely no way he would have understood the implications of, of this trust. The contract is signed by former CEO Richard Lilliston, notarized by former chief financial officer Frank Panulo. And there's absolutely no way my parents or I would have authorized this to be signed. Our investigation has learned that the Hark employees who signed as witnesses to the 2007 execution of this agreement actually didn't start working for Hark until 2009. This document is very problematic. We showed the contract to attorney Peter Hobson. You can't, under Florida law, ask somebody who doesn't have the competency to understand the document to execute the document. It's, it's one-on-one contract law. But Hart did. The money that was intended for dental, medical, and entertainment needs was not placed in a trust. Instead, Hark stuck the benefits of more than 40 clients into a money market account and used the cash as it pleased without the client's knowledge or permission. And it is a crime in Florida to temporarily or permanently deprive someone of their property without their consent. State investigators think Hart took as much as seven hundred thousand dollars, forty-nine grand from Vicki Caldwell, seventy-one hundred from Robert. That money was stolen from them, um, in, in, in my opinion, for. Um, without their knowledge. Much of the money Hart grabbed from clients was from Social Security. According to Hobson, that's something the feds need to investigate. It is criminal fraud under the Social Security law if you receive payment from Social Security for the benefit of an individual and then appropriate that money to anything other than the benefit of that individual. Money meant for clients' care and needs paid for operating expenses, including unauthorized $1,800 a month car allowances for Lilliston and Panulo. Do you know if any of that money may have uh, paid for your car loans? If it went into operations. It also paid for cell phones for Lilliston's family members. Clearly that evidence is something beyond the operating costs. That evidence is personal gain and greed. Another potential problem? Panulo notarized Robert Franklin's contract. That a notary public may not authorize a signature on a document if, if, if it appears that the person is mentally incapable of understanding the nature and effect of the document at the time of notarization. Federal and state investigations of Hark are underway. To ask a person with Down syndrome to sign a document that an attorney would have to read carefully to, to explain to normal pay adults is reprehensible. Prosecutors have yet to make a move. Somebody in government needs to stand up for these kind of children. These kind of children that cannot protect themselves. Ralph Franklin wrote letters to the Hillsborough County Sheriff, the State Attorney, Attorney General Pam Bonney, as well as the U.S. Attorney here in Florida, and told them the taking of money from Robert's account constitutes fraud, theft, and exploitation. He is asking that law enforcement conduct a thorough investigation of former CEO Lilliston and former CFO Panulo. The state is investigating a nationally recognized nonprofit agency that for decades provided cutting edge services and programs for the Bay Area's developmentally disabled citizens. For most of its 60 years, HARC 
was known as the Hillsborough Association for Retarded Citizens. It is now known as the Hillsborough Achievement and Resource Center. It is also up to its teeth in red ink. According to senior investigative reporter Steve Andrews, debt and funding cuts coupled with expensive legal fees brought on by a slew of government inquiries are bringing Hark, as we know it, to an end. His former board contends Richard Lilliston left Hark a mess. The Hillsborough Association for Retarded Citizens, now known as the Hillsborough Achievement and Resource Center, provides programs, housing, education, and work for these special people with special needs. According to Steve Brannick, Hark's board of directors discovered the agency was on the brink of financial collapse in 2011. We thought that we were a very professionally run, financially solid, stable organization. Since then, Hark's board struggled with keeping the lights on and doors open. The organization's broke. If that's not bad enough, investigators from several agencies swarmed Hark. The state's comptroller's office continues to focus on a program called HomeLink. The problems took place under our, our prior management administration, folks who are not here any longer. Contracts show Florida's Agency for Persons with Disabilities funded HomeLink starting in August 2008. It's a program in which Hark's clients provide services like cleaning and lawn mowing to homebound seniors. Hark's webpage calls HomeLink innovative. Well, last July, Hark's attorney Cynthia Mykos described HomeLink to the board of directors in much different terms. This is the most egregious of the, um, of the things that I've seen today. At that meeting, Michaels told board members Hark billed the state $705,000 for services to the elderly. Now, the state wants back five hundred seventy dollars Why? According to Michaels' explanation to the board, state investigators found Hark was missing records for the first six months of the program. But even more outrageous, 24 of the people Hark claims it served didn't even exist. And those were the lucky ones, because the comptroller's office says several people Hark billed for were already dead. Five of them are deceased people that we billed for. That's a shocking allegation. Um, and uh, and if, if that happened and it happened improperly, we would be just as angry about it as the, as the state. Brannick says Hark is so broke it can't afford an attorney or accountant to determine if the billing was a mistake or not. What's even more egregious is the dead customer supposedly told Hark how much they appreciated the work. I had not heard that. I have not seen that allegation. Well, you should have, because Hark's attorney spelled it out in plain English at that July meeting. We built services on deceased people. As for Richard Lilliston, he says he has absolutely no comment about Hark. His board, which was responsible for watching the hen house, fired him in late 2011. Now it's dealing with the mess that happened on Lilliston's watch. Investigators also told Mycos they found Hart charged the state $119 per quarter hour for the HomeLink program. That's 32 times the approved rate. The state wants $570,000 back. Throw on fines and penalties, it could total $2 million. Hart doesn't have that money, it's broke. Where'd the money go? Brannick thinks it went into Hark's operating fund, but no one will know for sure until the state finishes its investigation. Now, the problems with HomeLink are not new. A lawsuit filed in 2010 by former employee Tiffany Thomas claimed former chief financial officer Frank Panulo told her to make up names of seniors participating in the HomeLink program. Hark denied the allegations, but according to Thomas's attorney, Benjamin Williams, the two sides agreed to a confidential settlement. Wow. Yeah. An aid on your side investigation has confirmed that while a nationally acclaimed agency that assisted disabled people struggled for its survival, it also helped itself to its clients' money without their knowledge. The Hillsborough Association of Retarded Citizens, also known as HARC, sold off all of its assets last month to a private company. But as senior investigative reporter Steve Andrews tells us tonight, in a desperate attempt to stave off closing its doors, Hark grabbed hundreds of thousands of dollars from unknowing disabled clients. They rocked it. 
They rolled it. We get great support from this community and we deeply, deeply appreciate it. Threw the dice and teed it up. Imaginative annual fundraisers to benefit the Hillsborough Association of Retarded Citizens, also known as HARC. But HARC's expenses outweighed income. It faced closing its doors and ending services for its 350 developmentally disabled clients. So HARC got creative. It grabbed massive amounts of money from its clients. The money was from Social Security checks and other monetary gifts for group home residents all pooled into a trust account. According to Foundation Chair Steve Brannick, former CEO Richard Lilliston and CFO Frank Panulo set up the trust without the knowledge of Hark's board of directors. The money taken without the client's knowledge or permission. It was clearly improper. It was clearly wrong. Improper enough to catch the eye of Florida's Attorney General, who opened an investigation in November 2011. Several months later, at a July board of directors meeting, Hark attorney Cynthia Mike Michael's relayed what state investigators told her. I will tell you the dollar amount at issue is $750,000. Former CFO Frank Panulo. Can you tell us uh, how Hark spent the client's money that was all pooled into a big account? Um, they, 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 no, I don't, don't remember. Don't know. Well, let me refresh your memory. Hark spent the money on operating expenses keeping the doors open. Do you know if it was spent on operations? Uh, it was probably borrowed for operations. You just don't do it. Jim Freivogel is president of the McDonald Training Center, a local nonprofit that also supports and works with developmentally disabled clients. You never touch the funds of the people you serve. That's their money. It's for them to decide how they're going to spend it. In this field, that's an absolute. Nobody does that. Well, Hart did. Michaels told board members once the client's money was transferred into the operating account, there was really no way to trace it. She added the operating expenses included some sweet perks for Lilliston. It does appear that there are some interesting reimbursements for things like cell phones, um, car insurance policy, um, et cetera, et cetera, that were probably for family members. Mr. Lilliston was authorized to have his own cell phone, but not authorized to have a cell phone for the rest of his, the members of his family. And that was part of the grounds for the employment action that we took after we discovered that in the car allowance. Car allowance? According to the AG's report, Hark paid Lilliston and former CFO Panulo car allowances of 1800 bucks a month apiece. Did the uh, car allowance get uh, uh, run by the board? Absolutely not. We would never have approved a car allowance in that, in that range. So we were shocked to find out that it had been increased to that extent. Do you know if any of that money may have uh, paid for your car loans? If it went into operations. So it might have? It might have. Brannick says as far as he knew, the board never approved a car allowance for Panulo. Was that approved by the board? It was approved by Mr. Lilliston. Those expensive car allowances came out of Hark's operating account, paid in part with his client's personal money. It's just not done. I mean, it's, it's, it's beyond belief that anybody or any organization would do that. Richard Lilliston was entitled to a car allowance. The only figure mentioned in either of his two contracts with Hark was for 200 bucks a month. Steve Brannick says once the board learned Lilliston gave himself an $1,800 a month car allowance and it discovered the pooled trust account, it fired Lilliston in late 2011. Now, Lilliston has had no comment. As for the clients, it doesn't look like they'll be getting their money back anytime soon. Hark was broke when it sold its assets last month. Well, what happened with the Attorney General's investigation? Well, that, that was closed, and it has confirmed that the client's money was taken. It brought no charges because it said the allegations did not constitute Medicaid fraud. It was being looked at by the Medicaid Fraud Unit. And the Attorney General's office says all of this falls under questionable business practices. So it forwarded its investigation to the Department of Financial Services. Now, DFS, you might remember, is conducting an investigation into Hark for billing the state for services Hark says it provided to people who were already dead. So kind of the bottom line here is Hark used the client's money to keep the shop open. Yeah. Some might say, well, that's serving the client. Sure, and some would say, uh, you know, if it was that important to use the client's money, Tell them and their families up front yeah. so they have knowledge.
The U.S. government is now accusing the Hillsborough Association for Retarded Citizens, or HARC, of stealing its clients' Social Security benefits. Money that was placed in a special fund for their use was siphoned off into HARC's daily operating account. Well, sound familiar? It's exactly what Aiden Your Side senior investigative reporter Steve Andrews told us was occurring, and he's here with the latest. Natalie, the government filed this forfeiture complaint with a federal judge. It is identified and wants to seize $87,000 sitting in a Hark account at Synovus Bank. The Justice Department claims those funds are the proceeds of theft from the federal government. The money came from clients like 44-year-old Vicki Caldwell. In April, we disclosed that Hark took $49,000 of Vicki's Social Security benefits. Vicki's mother, Carolyn Caldwell. And I think they should have to account for every penny that's missing. In May, we told you Hark took $7,100 from Robert Franklin, an individual with Down syndrome who has since died. Robert's brother, Ralph. That money was stolen from them, um, in, in, in my opinion. Investigators believe Hark illegally took up to $700,000 of clients' money and used it to keep the doors open. Here's how the government says it happened. Hark obtained the signatures of 47 developmentally disabled clients like Vicki and Robert on complicated contracts like this. They knew that he didn't have the, the, the mental capability to enter into this kind of legal agreement. Vicki's not capable. She has an 18-month mentality. The contract supposedly allowed Hark to administer the client's money. Attorney Peter Hompson. You can't, under Florida law, ask somebody who doesn't have the competency to understand the document to execute the document. It's, it's 101 contract law. The feds label those contracts a sham. A joint federal and state criminal investigation discovered Hark unlawfully set up bank accounts for Vicki, Robert, and others, then siphoned away their Social Security benefits. Hobson agrees that is a real legal issue. And it is criminal fraud under the Social Security law if you receive payment from Social Security for the benefit of an individual and then appropriate that money to anything other than the benefit of that individual. When confronted, former Chief Financial Officer Frank Panulo at first denied knowledge of how the client's money was spent. Can you tell us uh, how Hark spent the client's money that was all pooled into a big account? Um, they, they, they sh no, I don't, don't remember, don't know. Did, do you know if it was spent on operations? Uh, it was probably borrowed for operations. It should show in the foundation books. The federal investigation confirmed our earlier reports that Hark used the money to fund its daily operations, which included $1,800 a month car allowances for former CEO Richard Lilliston and Panulo. Do you know if any of that money may have uh, paid for your car allowance? If it went into operations. Panulo says CEO Lilliston had to know about the movement of the money. Lilliston has refused all comment about what happened at Hark. The investigation also confirms something else we told you. The agreements Robert and others signed in 2007 were also signed by Lilliston, notarized by Panulo, and witnessed by employees who didn't start working for Hark until two years later. You know, somebody in government needs to stand up for these kind of children. These kind of children that cannot protect themselves. Well, someone did stand up. The U.S. Attorney's Office, the Department of Health and Human Services, and Florida's Department of Financial Services. And this is some of what they found. In 2010, Social Security deposits totaling just over $99,000 were transferred from client accounts at Synovus Bank into the Hark Endowment Fund. In 2011, $120,000 was unlawfully transferred, and in 2012, another 69 grand was illegally siphoned away. That totals to about $288,000 in about three years, taken from 56 developmentally disabled people. Wow, which is just horrible, but as you say, it kind of sounds like the cavalry is finally arriving on this. The feds filed for the forfeiture. What happens next? Good question. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office, if the forfeiture is contested, there'll be a period of time in which discovery will be allowed, after which there may be a hearing, or the judge could decide uh, on whether or not to, to grant the forfeiture based on the motions that have been submitted. Now, if the government prevails, the clients will be given notification and instructions about how to submit a claim for possible reimbursement. All right. Well, it's a good thing they're finally stepping in, and thanks for that update this you midday. Bet. Thanks, sure. Steve.